All right, let's jump into this. We're going deep on a document that's pretty much your bread and butter as a Marine. Yeah, your plea button. MCDP-1, war fighting. That's right. Specifically Chapter 2, uh, the theory of war. We're going to pull out some of the big ideas, stuff that will make you a better, smarter, more lethal Marine, honestly. Exactly. And you know you're already out there training hard, mastering your MOS skills. Absolutely. But this is about, like, the mindset, right? This is about how the Marine Corps thinks about war. Getting that bigger picture mm -hmm. so you can make decisions that really, you know, fit into that. Yep. Now, we may not wear the uniform. Right. But we've spent some serious time with this chapter. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you, it's not just some boring theory. No. This is like the DNA of how Marines fight and win. Absolutely. This is the foundation. And right off the bat, MCDP-1 throws a quote at you from Clausewitz. Oh, a good one. The political object is the goal. War is the means. Never consider means in isolation from their purpose. Heavy stuff. That's pretty powerful. What does that even mean? I mean, think about it this way. Before you even start talking tactics, you got to know why you're fighting, right? What's the mission? Okay, so what's the political goal? What are we actually trying to achieve here? Okay, so that's where I think this, this distinction between, like, policy and politics gets kind of tricky, right? Yeah, because when MCDP-1 says policy, they're not talking about, you know, elections and campaigns yeah they mean the actual objectives set by the folks at the top the national leadership so it's like the president saying this is what we want to accomplish exactly and that then filters all the way down yep all the way down to the to the marines on the ground to you yeah so how does knowing that like how does that affect what a marine on the ground is actually doing well that's where these two ways of imposing our will on the enemy come in right you got annihilation and you got erosion Okay, break those down for me. Annihilation, that's like dismantling their ability to fight completely. Heck. Okay, so like shock and awe. Yeah, overwhelming force just crushing them. So I'm picturing like, you know, helicopters, tanks, the whole nine yards. The whole shebang, yeah. But what about erosion? That sounds a little more... Uh, subtle. Uh, so, yeah. Exactly, erosion is more about making it just too costly for the enemy to keep fighting. Okay. Not just in terms of casualties, but like you know, economic hardship, political pressure, you're basically breaking their will. So it's not one big knockout punch. Right. It's like a sustained campaign. You're grinding them down, making them realize it's just not worth it anymore. So a Marine might be involved in anything from, you know, kicking down doors, direct combat. Sure. To securing supply routes or supporting civilian aid efforts. Right. It all depends on the mission and which of those approaches, annihilation or erosion, actually gets us closer to that political goal. Got it. And that's why MCDP-1 is so insistent that military force, it's just one tool in the toolbox. You got diplomacy, you got economic sanctions, information operations. It's a whole orchestra of effort, and Marines need to see how they fit into that. Okay, my mind is officially blown. Good, that's the goal. We're talking about being like a strategic thinker while you're, you know, being a total badass on the ground. That's the Marine Corps in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. And that brings us to another big idea, this whole spectrum of conflict thing. Oh, yeah. It's not just peace and then bam, total war, right? Right, right. And I hear that term thrown around a lot. But what does that actually mean for a Marine? So think of it like a dimmer switch, okay? It goes from like low intensity stuff, hum humanitarian aid, peacekeeping, right. all the way up through counterinsurgency, regional conflicts, and then, yeah, full-blown global war. So it's like levels of intensity. Exactly. And a Marine needs to be ready for anything on that spectrum. To be able to flex. To adapt, yeah. And that's honestly what makes the Corps so unique. I can see why this MCDP-1 is so important then. It's giving you that mental framework to handle like whatever gets thrown at you. Whatever the world throws at you. Exactly. And to actually operate within that, you got to understand these levels of war. Right. right. Yeah. The strategic, operational, and tactical. All right. Break those down for me. Okay. So strategic, that's the 30,000 foot view, big picture stuff, national objectives, yeah. big decisions being made by, you know, the top brass. So like the president decides we're getting involved in a conflict. That's strategic level thinking. Got it. And what about operational? Operational is that bridge between strategy and tactics. It's designing campaigns, figuring out how to actually achieve those big strategic goals. So generals figuring out how to win the war. Right. Choosing where to send forces, what kind of operations to launch. And then tactical is where the rubber meets the road. Exactly. Where you as a Marine are operating, winning battles, engagements, skirmishes, 
the immediate fight. So even though like a fire team is laser focused on their specific objective, right? their actions are still feeding into that bigger chain. Absolutely, impacting the operational, even the strategic levels. And MCDP-1 points out that sometimes those levels can get all compressed, especially in smaller scale conflicts or things that move really fast. Right, right. You might be making decisions that have tactical and operational impact. That's a lot of responsibility. It, it is, but it also shows how important it is for Marines to be thinking beyond just their immediate task, you know? See the bigger picture. Exactly. Yeah, okay. I'm definitely starting to see that. Good, because we're going to keep digging into that. Right. Next up, we're hitting those concepts of initiative, offense, and defense, and the styles of warfare that really make the Marine Corps, you know, the Marine Corps. All right, stay with us. Okay, so let's talk about something that's like baked into the Marine Corps DNA initiative. Oh, yeah, I hear that word a lot. What does that actually mean when we're talking war fighting? Well, MCDP-1, it really hammers this home. It's all about dictating the terms of the fight. Right, not just reacting. Exactly. You're setting the pace, exploiting opportunities before the enemy even knows what hit them. So if you're constantly on the defensive, you're basically playing the enemy's game. You're letting them dictate the terms, and that's a losing proposition. So for a Marine, what does that look like, taking initiative? So it's about seeing those openings, you know, making decisions faster than the enemy can, okay. acting while they're still trying to figure out what's going on. So, like, let's say a, pat a patrol spots a weakness in the enemy's defenses. Are we talking about, like, a Marine just taking action on their own? Yeah, within their authority, of course. But, yeah, it's about seeing that opening and going for it. Not just reporting up the chain and waiting for orders. Right. By the time those orders come down, the opportunity might be gone. Got it. So initiative is about, like, being proactive. Absolutely. And that ties into this whole offense-defense thing. Okay, how so? Well, MCDP-1 says offense and defense, they're not opposites. They're two sides of the same coin. Okay. Even when you're on the attack, you got to be ready to defend. And the best defense includes a way to shift back to the offense. So it's like always being ready to switch gears. Exactly. Think of it like a boxer, you know, jabbing, blocking, looking for that opening to land a knockout punch. But even the best attacks can't go on forever, right? Right. That's where this idea of the culminating point comes in. What's that? Basically, every attack, no matter how successful, it eventually loses momentum. Okay. Supplies run low, troops get tired, the enemy adapts, you know. So knowing that must be super important for anyone making decisions in the field. Oh, absolutely. Recognizing when you've hit that culminating point and being ready to maybe go on the defensive, that could be the difference between winning and losing. So it's not just about charging ahead blindly. No, it's calculated aggression knowing when to push and when to hold back, knowing your limits. So initiative is about, like, calculated risk-taking. Right, which brings us to how the Marine Corps actually fights. Let's get into it. MCDP-1 talks about two main styles of warfare, attrition and maneuver. Okay, I've heard those terms before. What's the difference? So attrition is the classic slugfest. You're trying to wear down the enemy by just having more firepower, more troops, more resources. Okay, so just grinding them down. Exactly, but... MCDP-1 is very clear. The Marine Corps favors maneuver warfare. And that's more about, like, outsmarting the enemy. Right. Hitting them where they're weak, disrupting their plans, keeping them off balance. Okay, so less about brute force, more about using your brain. Exactly. Think about the Incheon landing in Korea. Totally unexpected, bold move. Changed the whole course of the war. Okay, so that's maneuver warfare in action. Textbook example, but why do you think the Corps favors maneuver over attrition? Especially when, you know, we might be facing enemies that have way more troops or firepower. Yeah, that's a good question. Wouldn't it make more sense to just try to outgun them? Maybe, but Marines are trained to be agile, adaptable, to think on their feet. Right. Maneuver warfare, it lets a smaller, more mobile force take on a bigger enemy by exploiting their weaknesses, by being smarter. So it's about leveraging our strengths. Which aren't always about raw numbers, exactly, and it leads us to combat power, what makes a force effective. Okay, so what does MCDP-1 say about that? Well, it says it's more than just tanks and troops. It's morale, leadership, terrain, the ability to communicate, even the element of surprise. Okay. It all plays a role. So even a small unit, if they're well-trained, highly motivated. They can punch way above their weight class. Especially if they can catch the enemy off guard. Right, and MCDP-1 highlights two force multipliers that apply no matter what. Speed and focus. Speed and focus. Okay, I like that. So speed, we're not just talking about running fast. It's about making decisions faster, maneuvering faster, disrupting the enemy's audio loop. Their what? 
OD loop, observe, orient, decide, act. It's like their decision-making cycle. Okay. If you can move and act faster than they can think, you've got a huge advantage. Gotcha. And what about focus? Focus is about concentrating your combat power where it matters most at the decisive point. So not just spraying and praying, but choosing your targets carefully. Right. Maximizing the impact of every action, every bullet, every movement. Makes sense. So speed and focus, those are like force multipliers. They can make a good unit great and a great unit unstoppable. And that brings us to two more big ideas, surprise and boldness. Okay, those sound pretty straightforward. What does MCDP-1 say about them? Well, it says achieving surprise, it can totally mess with the enemy's plans. It creates chaos, gives you a psychological edge. So how do we achieve surprise? Is it all about being sneaky? Like stealthy? Stealth is definitely part of it, but MCDP-1 lays out three main ways to do it. Deception, ambiguity, and stealth. Okay, so deception is like... Making the enemy think you're doing one thing when you're really doing something else. Like a misdirection. Exactly, like a magician using sleight of hand. And what about ambiguity? Ambiguity is more about keeping the enemy guessing. You're not necessarily trying to trick them. Okay. But your movements and intentions, they're just not clear. They can't predict what you're going to do next. So they're always on edge, never sure what's coming. Exactly. And then stealth, that's the straightforward one. Minimizing your signature, moving undetected. Okay, so deception, ambiguity, stealth, those are the three ways to achieve surprise. Right, and all of those are made even more effective with a healthy dose of boldness. Boldness, so like taking risks. Calculated risks, yeah. MCDP-1 talks about being willing to seize opportunities even when things are uncertain. Because sometimes the best move is the one the enemy doesn't see coming. Exactly. Boldness, it's about having the guts to act decisively when the opportunity arises. Got it. So boldness is about action, but not reckless action. Right, it's about knowing when to push the envelope. And now, to really focus our combat power, MCDP-1 talks about understanding the enemy centers of gravity and critical vulnerabilities. Okay, I've heard those terms before, but honestly, I'm not sure I totally get them. Can you break those down for me? Sure. So a center of gravity, it's what gives the enemy their strength, what allows them to operate. Okay. It could be their command structure, their logistics, a key piece of terrain, even their morale or ideology. So it's like the heart of their operation. Exactly. And we want to attack those centers of gravity, but not directly. Okay, so how do we do that? That's where critical vulnerabilities come in. These are the enemy's weaknesses, the gaps in their defenses, the things that, if we exploit them, can cripple those centers of gravity. So it's like finding their Achilles heel. Yep, the one spot where a well-aimed strike can bring the whole thing down. But how do we even find those vulnerabilities in the middle of, you know, the chaos of war? That's where good intelligence comes in, reconnaissance, just being aware of what's going on around you. And MCDP-1 says even the most powerful enemy, they have vulnerabilities. There's always a weakness, somewhere. Always. And remember, war is unpredictable. Things rarely go exactly according to plan, which is why this last concept we're going to talk about is so important. Creating and exploiting opportunity. Okay, I'm all ears. MCDP-1, it acknowledges that war is fluid, chaotic, unexpected things happen things change fast all the time and new opportunities they pop up constantly so it's not about rigidly sticking to the plan right it's about being adaptable being able to think on your feet and improvise so being able to adjust to the situation exactly and that's where the marine corps emphasis on maneuver warfare really pays off i see that a maneuver minded force is like by definition more flexible more ready to seize those fleeting opportunities they're always looking for that opening probing testing looking for those weak spots and then bam they strike so a marine trained in mcdp1 they're not just reacting to the enemy no they're actively creating opportunities through their actions, through their mindset. So it's like a proactive approach to warfare. Exactly. And that, my friend, is what makes the Marine Corps such a formidable fighting force. So we've covered a lot of ground here, huh? Yeah, we have. From like, you know, the political goals of war. The big picture. All the way down to like the decisions being made in the heat of battle. Right, right. So for a Marine listening to this, you know, going deep on MCDP-1, yeah. what's the one thing you want them to walk away with? I think the biggest takeaway is that MCDP-1 gives you a framework for thinking about winning. Not just on the battlefield. Right. It's bigger than that. It's about this whole like chaotic world of modern warfare. 
So understanding how your actions, even at the smallest unit level, a fire team, a squad, contribute to that bigger picture. Absolutely. And how those, you know, maybe they seem like abstract concepts. Like maneuver warfare. Centers of gravity, exploiting opportunities, all that stuff. How that actually plays out in the real world. Right. How it translates into results on the ground. And I think it's important to say, like, this has been a crash course. A highlight reel. Hitting the big points. But MCDP-1 is something that, you know... you got to wrestle with it. Every Marine should grapple with it. Read it, reread it, think about it. Yeah, and as you gain experience, as you face new challenges... It'll take on new meaning. You'll see it from different angles. So to all the Marines out there listening... Keep studying, keep asking questions. Keep pushing yourselves to be the best warfighters you can be. Because MCDP-1... It's not just some theory cooked up in a classroom. Right. This is the wisdom of generations of Marines who came before you. Like a roadmap. A guide to navigating the complexities of war. And it's your dedication, your sacrifice. That makes the Marine Corps what it is. Go take this stuff to heart, make it your own. Let it guide you as you face the challenges ahead. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your service.